Trying to cover the mistakes in the continuity of the X-Men franchise is a lot like trying to cover up a 7 square feet hole with the help of a 5 square feet piece of tiles. You can do your best to fit that in but there's always going to be another 2 square feet of hole on the other sides. The timeline will never make any sense. Over here you can get to see the X-Men movies from the left to right sorted by their release dates. If you look above you can find another chronological order based on the actual events that took place within the X-Men movies. For example the first event took place in 1944 in the 2011 first class movie. Professor Xavier met Raven for the first time and in the meanwhile Eric was suffering inside a German concentration camp. But yes, there's another event that took place in 1845 when Logan got to find out his mutant power for the first time but that event is not important for the discussion today. The final event took place in 2029 in the 2017 Logan movie. Professor Xavier and Logan along with all other mutants from the Xavier school died due to a variety sets of events. I have removed the Deadpool series and the Dark Phoenix from the diagram as they are not necessary to explain the timeline of the X-Men series. On the other hand, I guess you know the fact that Dark Phoenix was a disgrace to the X-Men franchise. Now let's begin. When I was 17, I met a young man named Eric Lenscher. Professor Xavier says that he met Eric when he was just 17 years old and guess what? Professor was born on the 13th of July in 1940. He met Eric in 1962. So technically, he met Eric at the age of 22, not 17. And this is the original timeline, by the way. And also, the new timeline cannot affect the events that took place before 1973. According to the original timeline, this is the face of Professor Xavier in 1973. And then, this is the face of Xavier again in 1979. Just within six years, how can this man become so old? Now just don't tell me that excessive drinking made this guy so old within six Six years. And then there goes the dilemma of Cornell Stryker. So many strikers in the franchise. Let's follow the original timeline. This is Cornell Stryker in 1973. This is Cornell Stryker again in 1979. And then this is Cornell fucking Stryker again in 2003. What the hell is that? How can a young man like this become so old just within six freaking years? And remember, this is the face of Cornell Stryker even before Logan took any step to create the new timeline. And then look at the face of the 2003 Stryker. Really? Seriously? They don't even look like the same person. And then this guy was arrested in 1979 because of killing General Munson inside the lab on the Three Mile Island. He is supposed to be in prison right now. Some of you are going to write in the comment section saying that this young man is the son of Colonel Stryker. But if you take a look at the comic books or even the Wikipedia pages, you can find out that Colonel Stryker only had one son who is Jason Stryker, another psychic telepath just like Professor Xavier. In 1979, Professor Xavier rescued Scott Summers and took him to his house in Westchester. In the year 2000, Logan gets to meet Scott Summers but Scott didn't even recognize this man. Logan in 1979 literally rescued all the mutants from the lab of Colonel Stryker and Scott was also one of the survivors. Let's say Logan doesn't know about this man because he lost his memory after taking an adamantium bullet into his nasal cavity. What about Scott? Maybe he didn't see the face of Logan but the other survivors have seen this man and they they have definitely talked about Logan inside the Xavier school. Even after that, Scott has no idea exactly who saved his life in 1979. This is teenager Emma Frost in 1969 and then this is adult Emma Frost in 1962. How is that even possible? In 1962, Emma Frost is either going to be a newborn baby or she might not be even born yet. Also, in the year of 2000, you can't find Emma Frost inside the house of Professor Charles Xavier when she was supposed to be escorted by Charles in 1960. 79 from the Three Mile Island. Why don't you just use it to find Magneto? I've been trying, but he seems to have found some way to shield himself from it. In the year 2000, Professor Xavier says that he doesn't know how to control the mind of Magneto because the mind of Eric is safeguarded with the help of a metallic object and Charles has no idea what that thing is. But in 1962, Professor Xavier has seen that metallic helmet on the head of Eric which actually belonged to Sebastian Klaus. Charles even had a lot of trouble reading the mind of Klaus because of the helmet. So why the hell did he say that thing in the future? It's been almost 15 years, hasn't it? With no memory of who or what you are. Shut up. 
In the year 2000, Xavier also said that Logan had been wandering here and there in search of his true identity for 15 years. So let's do some calculation. Logan lost his memory in 1979 after getting an adamantium bullet through his nasal cavity on the Three Mile Island. Now the present timeline of the movie is 2000. So it's not actually 15 years, it's 21 years, not 15, Jesus. This is Victor Creed aka the Sabertooth in 1979 and then this is Sabertooth again in 2000. Now ask yourself. Do you find any kind of similarity between the faces of these two people? Yeah, the beard matches a lot, but apart from this, you can't find any match between the faces of these two people, can you? This is Professor Xavier in 1973 according to the new timeline. This is Professor Xavier in 1983 according to the same new timeline. But here's the problem. This dude transformed from this to this in the original timeline. But now, as you can see, 10 years have been passed and this dude didn't even age at all. The same goes for the other characters. I wonder what kind of crack they have been smoking. If I find out this crack, I can definitely achieve eternity with the help of this thing. In the original timeline, the big brother of Logan, Victor Creed, was fighting in the Vietnam War in 1973 and he tried to rape a Vietnamese woman over there. When the other soldiers tried to stop him, he assaulted a couple of those people and then Logan also tried to defend his brother over there. After that, both of them got sentenced to death, but they survived because of their healing power. And then Colonel Stryker came to their cell with a proposal to join his notorious X team. And guess what? Within the same timeline when Logan came back to 1973, this dude was not working for the X team. He was not inside the prison either. He was literally working as a bodyguard of a rich girl. How would you like to explain that shit to me? According to the original timeline, this is how Logan ran away from the alkali lab. According to the new timeline, this is how Logan ran away through the back of the same lab in Alkali. And guess what? In the original timeline, Cornell Striker looks like this. In the new timeline, Cornell Striker looks like this. How can this man become so young through the new timeline? And don't forget the fact that Cornell Striker has only one child who is Jason Striker. So this guy is not the son of Cornell Striker. If I want, I can do this all day exposing more mistakes in the continuity of the X-Men timeline. But I don't want to stretch this video anymore. All I want to say is that the 20 19th century studio was never good at maintaining a flawless continuity within the X-Men timeline. So if you have already finished watching all the X-Men movies and feeling confused about the timeline, now you know the answer. So don't take the timeline of the X-Men series seriously including even the Deadpool movies. You're gonna get disappointed and the dilemma is going to fuck with your mind pretty good. So I would like to suggest you to keep your brain inside your pocket while watching these kinds of movies and you're gonna be fine after that. Why don't you just use it to find Magneto? I've been trying, but he seems to have found some way to shield himself from it.